Now this tutorial here is just building on the other tutorials on creating buttons and action script within a single scene. I've actually uploaded for you on Edmodo this project that you're looking at now, but I'm going to build upon it so you understand what's going on. So I have my button there, really basic button, of course yours are going to look a lot better than this. Uh, up on the right in the properties you can see up here I've called it scene2 underscore btn. We need to make sure we name our buttons and give them a name that makes sense. It's not the name of the symbol. Okay, The name of this symbol is just symbol1. I didn't name it when I created it. There are two names that you have to give. The one up here is the crucial one for action script. So I have my button and I have a little bit of action script. So let's bring that up. We have our crucial stop, as a lot of you have probably found when you run your projects at this point, it just flicks through all the scenes. That's no good. But what I do want to add is a button here to allow me to go on to the next scene. And I've called it the scene2 underscore button, as you remember. So just so we're clear, that text there needs to appear in the actions. So you've seen before, we add event listener, mouse event click, etc. I'm just going to pull it out of here so we can see everything at once. There we go. I called the function C chain, scene change, not C change, scene change. And in my scene change, instead of just go to and stop or go to and play, you can do either. Usually you want it to stop. If you want it to play a sequence though from the beginning of the scene, make sure you put play in. Now that's the frame number there. You could give it a label if you want, like we've done in the past, but that's frame one. And here is scene two in inverted commas. So it knows now to go to frame one, scene two. I'll just to give you that example, I'll run it. And there you go, my exciting new scene. So it's pretty easy. Once you've got that code, which as I said, I've uploaded it, you can just copy and paste it. You can pretty much grab all of this. And we'll change our scenes once I can I'll get the timeline back in a moment. Go to scene two. I'm just going to reset my workspace. Scene two, you can see I've already got the stop. I'll go back into that actions window. Paste it. However, I might have a different scene here. If you've got Choices, multiple choices, you need two you need two buttons and two functions. So a button to go one way, whether it's left or right, that might be an example you've got. So you'll have a function called left and a function called right, a button that might be called left underscore BTN, and one that's called right underscore BTN. So I'm gonna go back to scene one in this case. So just to make it easy. I'll put a one in there. I'll call it scene return. So that's changing the names of the functions, and that's the name of the button. Now I don't have a button just yet, so I'll make one. Square button, doesn't matter. Select it. Right click, convert to the symbol, and button's good enough for me. However, what do I need to call the instance name? Who remembers? Scene one underscore BTN. If you're not sure, oops, that's a hyphen. If you're not sure, what I would do is, whichever one you start with first, make sure you can copy and paste into the next one. So just make sure of it. 
copy that, paste it into my action script, and I know then it's going to be right. What else do I need to change here? Where's this button going to take me at this point? So, is it going to the right one? No. No, what do I need to go to? Scene one. Yeah, so all I need to do is just change that to one. Now we can test it. And it's all good. They're scenes. They're not going along the timeline at all. So it's pretty simple. It's just a little extension on what I'd already shown you. I do suggest you look back at the other tutorials though because they explain the action script in a little more detail.